first one in uh, archaeology, paleography, and all this stuff. Uh, and probably I am the only one in this room, but uh, I have heard the, the word Ostraka for the first time one year ago. So please, <laughs> I apologize in advance about uh, all the mistakes that I can do about this topic in uh, pure uh, paleography. Uh, so uh, it's this work, I present the work uh, that we did with uh, Cecilia Ostertag, who is a PhD student with my, uh, under my supervision. And in fact, uh, it is not at all uh, uh, main topics for the PhD because she works on MRI, brain MRI. You know, what is MRI? And three dimension. So what it has been funny is that it's a model that she has used for MRI is pretty similar than this one for Ostraka. It is uh, something that it could be magic in uh, computer science. <laughs> So uh, we come from a computer science lab in Bordeaux. In fact, Cecilia is in Bordeaux also. And this work is a collaboration work with Sandra Lipper that someone perhaps knows, uh, who is in Paris. And we, we met for the first time last uh, one year ago and we discussed about uh, our collection of Ostraka. Mm? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So it is. It is an Ostraka, and it is a, a se it is several Ostraka, um, and it is what we call the success story because you can see in uh, the ah, ah. sorry. Okay, uh, in this part you can see the six piece, the six shared of Ostraka, and when uh, they ha they have been assembly. To, uh, to produce uh, the, the text. What we can see, uh, what, what it is very important for us as a computer scientist when we wanted to analyze this image is that you have several uh, broken, uh, broken uh, characteristics. For example, if you consider this one, perhaps it has been broken before that uh, the man write in the Astraka, wrote in the Astraka. And of course, this one has been made after. Uh, so it is why uh, considering the shape of the different shirt is not, perhaps it is not the best way to find the solution for, a for the program. Uh, because it's not possible to tell to the program uh, which broken line is useful and which, which is not. So uh, in our work, we work uh, with uh, deep learning, and we prefer to try to collect a lot of features uh, from each piece and uh, put them together in the network to obtain some similarity evaluation, some distance uh, quantity uh, between the two, two pieces. I will explain that. In fact, this problem is a problem of puzzle, and it is just to remind you that a puzzle can be solved in uh, computer science by clustering method, and uh, it is a statistic method. And uh, for example, if you consider these three images and you put, uh, you, you, you put them in pieces and ask to a program or a cluster method to assemble again, uh, you can find here why the, the program did some mistakes because the color could be here more, could be similar. And so uh, if you take into account the color as the main uh, characteristic, uh, you can make a lot of, uh, make a lot of mistakes for this reason. Here it is just uh, uh, the same uh, algorithm but with another characteristic which is segmentation when you, where you try to extract a region uh, with the same color, with the same value. But it is uh, what, what it is in this uh, article and so you can find it easily and uh, they explain how they, they do. But, uh, uh, okay, <laughs> yes. 
for us. Uh, we are working on deep learning approach, and uh, it is very, very famous in this uh, from these last 10 years. Uh, it is not new, in fact, not at all, because uh, uh, neural networks have been studied more than 30 years or something like that to, to put inside computers. But uh, what happens uh, recently, the last 10 years, is that both material, resource, and uh, huge data, data set, uh, are available. And so that changed uh, a lot the way to work with deep learning. Because in deep learning, you, you need, you absolutely need a lot of computing resources. And uh, you need also uh, to train your model with a lot of data. And so it's why uh, at the beginning in the 90s, for example, I've tried in the 90s, uh, and I have been afraid to tell that, okay, it doesn't work. <laughs> it did not work, not at all. And now uh, in image analysis, pretty all the different uh, topics are addressed with uh, deep learning now because they, they provide new way to, uh, to analyze the image, you can use for uh, as a, just as a tool to do uh, another thing or to, to obtain segmentation, to obtain binarization, for example. You have seen, uh, we, uh, we discussed that on Tuesday. And uh, just to explain a little bit, if you don't know what it is, uh, we use convolutional neural networks that it is based on a convolution. And co convolution is easy to understand. You have an image and you have a sliding window and you collect information, quantitative information as a color uh, intensity, for example, uh, from this area and you summarize in the different uh, square, yeah, in the different through different layers and that resume, in fact, uh, some, ca some features of your image, and you propagate uh, by applying some decision function or uh, uh, subtraction, or it depends what you want to do. And so what you hope is that at the end, you can obtain some uh, values, uh, always numbers, that can help you to decide if finally uh, this image is a cat or not. Um, so the only way to obtain response is not only a binary uh, response. Sometimes you can have a probability to belong to one class. And for example, the ImageNet, uh, uh, the ImageNet um, competition, in fact, uh, c uh, from Google, uh, try to classify a billion of images in more than 100 class classes. And so so it is the main principle uh, to, to apply the deep learning. And of course, you can put a cat, but you can put an ostraca. It's the same. To go back to the puzzle task, uh, Pomar and uh, et al. here. OK, yes. Uh, they have published uh, something where they use a convolutional network to extract the features from the image, and after that, after decision, if uh, the piece of the image belongs to the, the image they are looking for or not, they try to build some kind of uh, graph uh, to appreciate the possibility to be close for one piece to be close to the other one. And so, with this information, try to reassemble the image. It is a MET collection. They apply on the MET, different uh, image from the MET. Uh, they apply some very famous algorithm in, uh, in informatics, like the extra algorithm, to find the best pathway through the different piece. And they said that, for example, these two images, the image in red, are uh, in, the ba in the wrong position. In fact, they are not. Uh, uh, widely placed. So, we use convolutional network for our problem, but, but a very specific one, which is a Siamese network. In fact, <coughs> in a Siamese network, you have one convolutional network here and another, no, another one here, and you collect information, the output here, 
and you compute a distance between your two branches to appreciate if the two images are similar or not. <coughs> it is called Siamese network because the weight that you propagate in the network are the same, and it is why they call the Siamese. And the first, uh, the first application of this network have been how to recognize signature of person in the bank uh, process, for example. Or now it is uh, most often used in the face recognition. You have one person, you have a collection of another person, and you have to tell if one image corresponds to the same person or not in your data, data set. Uh, as I told you before, Cecilia did it for the first time for the MRI, uh, brain MRI. It is a question about uh, Alzheimer's disease. We have the, um, uh, the brain of the person at T0. We have another image uh, after six months. And <coughs> we have to decide if uh, it is the same image or if the disease made some progress. And so that changes the brain image. And she took the network, make some modification, of course, but the principle is the same. And so we have, uh, she took one piece, one shared of Ostraka. We have a big data set of another one and try to decide if they can match or not. So we compute the distance between these two shared and to tell, okay, they are close or not. Uh, this is an example of someone uh, use Samis network to uh, decide uh, to, to apply the graph algorithm to uh, rearrange the different pieces in only one image. Just uh, that, no more. And here, okay. So we have the Ostracash here, and <coughs> we, oops, we have the the edge. Okay, we have. Uh, we have the color, we have the texture, and we have some writing text. Writing text okay. uh, I have to mention that we never segment really the shared. Uh, we don't binarize no more. We keep the, the image like that. We just uh, ex try to suppress a little bit the background because uh, the background is not always the same for all the pieces because the pictures have not been taken in the same time, and so that changed the condition. <coughs> of course, what it is very, very important is that we have this rule to tell us what is the physical size of the piece, because if we don't have that, we can't work. Mm -hmm. So it is very, very important when you want to, when you want to uh, build a new data set and uh, take some pictures, it is very, very important to do that. If you don't do, we can't do nothing because uh, I can understand that uh, you change the, the scale to have a very good image of a small piece and you have no, no way, you have to enlarge the image when you have a large piece. But uh, if you have no way to appreciate that after with the machine, how we can find some algorithm to match them if they, if they don't have the right uh, physical size? It's very, very important. Of course, if you can, uh, if you can have uh, acquisition process in the same room with the same camera in the same condition, it is perfect. It is uh, <coughs> what we we are doing with uh, Marie Pierre Chauffre about a collection of papier papier and the the tech again, all the pictures with this kind of rule, and that's true that the quality of the result is really uh, linked to, this, uh, to that. Uh, another thing uh, which is important is uh, when we consider some object, uh, in papyri we don't have this question because we can easily consider that papyri is two-dimension, uh, of course, as a, a lot of documents, but with a straka, uh, we have a two-dimension image, but of a three-dimension object. Uh, according to the response to Sandra about that, we have considered that it is a two-dimension because the piece is so small that the curve most often is not very important to, uh, to analyze the image of the, of the shell. But this point has to be uh, to, 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 in order to appreciate which procedure is the best one. 
Uh, it is some example of the trap that you can have when you want to analyze automatically uh, some shared of a tracker. Uh, the broken line is not uh, always the real one because uh, it has been made a long time ago. And in, with the papyri that we work also uh, with Marie-Pierre, with Antoine, who is here, uh, with the same model. And it's uh, worse. It, it is terrible because uh, the, the line is never straight. We have a lot of uh, piece of fiber. We, so we have decided to don't take into account uh, this, uh, this line. Uh, and what it is important also is that if you want to uh, find the best matching automatically between the pieces, all the algorithm will propose to you the longest one. And there are no rules to tell that the, the best one is the longest one. Because, uh, for example, here, for this line, you have to take into account that you need two pieces to do that. Okay, so uh, f working again, working with the shape could be a trap. And of course, you have some rule. And sometimes a very small rule is not very important to reread the, the Ostraka or the papyri. But for us, for the algorithm, if you try to obtain the best match, that can lead to a big mistake if you, uh, if you do that. And of course, it is not at all sufficient to add. So uh, we prefer to use uh, local texture and writing patterns around the fracture to detect matching fragments. And so how we can do that? First, uh, I told you before that uh, to work with deep learning, we need a huge data set. And huge data set is not 160. A huge data set is several thousands or millions of something. But it exists in image processing uh, methods to uh, enlarge your data set and to obtain more images. Uh, what we have chosen, both for Straka and for the Papieri project, is that when we have this big piece of uh, a shard, to extract a small square, the patch, in, in the piece, and we have obtained two different things. So first, we have more three, three, three advantage. First, we have a lot of example because uh, uh, we can build a lot of different pieces of uh, Straka with only one. And second, it's a way to have the ground truth because, of course, when you want to train your model, you need to know some solution to tell you are right or you are wrong. And sometimes we have 10 uh, success stories. It's not at all enough. Okay. So if we build a 100 or a 50, uh, shared, a 50 patch in this share, we have a 50 success story because we know that all belongs to this, to this fragment. So it's a way to obtain more uh, ground truth. And as the patch uh, regu have regular shape, we are pretty sure that we never learn the shape because the shape is the same for everyone, for all the pieces. So your network is not able to make the difference between one square and another square. He never uh, keep in his mind, if he has a mind, <laughs> he never keep the, this information about the shape because it is the same for everyone. Okay, uh, so we can enlarge. We have also another techniques in image processing. Sometimes we can change the, some colors. We can keep only one channel of color. We can add transparency. Uh, for Papyri, we have recto and verso, and we have two acquisition uh, process, uh, infrared and colors. So for only one uh, example, we have a lot of information. Of course, both for Straka and Papyri, we can uh, add the metadata as uh, information about uh, the data, any kind of information that you can provide about that. 
and we have a vector with this uh, information, and we can insert in the model, of course. After that, uh, Cecilia has decided to create this algorithm to uh, build a way, uh, an easiest way, to find the right position of each piece. She decided to give, to define classes uh, with when you have, you take one piece. These four elements are, have the label of uh, the, their orientation. And if they are labeled zero, it's because they are not closed to the, to the main piece, to the main, uh, to, 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 to this fragment. Okay. And so that gave us a lot of uh, examples of many things. This is the model of the uh, Siamese network. Uh, what I can suggest is that I can explain to you, if someone would like to have the uh, detail of that, I can explain to you uh, during the coffee break or at any moment. Uh, what you just, I have to mention that it is a convolutional part. And here, um, Cecilia decides that, for example, to extract, where is my pointer, to extract, uh, to crop this part on the edge to decide the closest uh, area, not take into account uh, all the image. So she needs crop, to crop uh, an area, and after that, uh, subtract the different information that coming from this part uh, to obtain a distance between the two elements that she compares, and after that, apply uh, plop, plop. Uh, apply the current way to, to process with a full connected um, and pooling uh, method to obtain at the end the probability to belong of one of the five classes for each pair that she compares. Uh, this is uh, one kind of result. You can see that I, you can't, I'm sorry, you can't read in red the probability. And uh, it is uh, the origin <coughs> uh, piece that we compare. For this one, we have obtained more than 80% of probability to be closed in this place. And here it is uh, another origin example, and uh, it is more than 90% of, uh, uh, of probability to be closed to this one. So, um, So we can tell that our model could detect correctly if two patches are neighbors or not, and to predict their directions. So it is uh, an example. So she produced, she considered one. Okay, this one has been the origin, and it is a, a success, a good assembly. And so she has produced this graph with. A, it is the best probability to be there. Sorry. Uh, it is the best probability to be as that, but we have also some bad example. This one is okay, not complete, but all the pieces are, uh, are in the right place, but here, here, for example, you made a lot of mistakes. And the problem is that when you consider one piece and you begin to put in the wrong place some, some uh, piece, all the other probability are affected by, by that. And so, uh, if you begin by a mistake, <laughs> you have more and more mistakes, of course. It is one of the main problems with deep network. When, uh, when it is wrong, it is strongly wrong, because uh, it's difficult to tell to the network uh, 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 that it is a, a real mistake. So, but, okay, we, are, we need to work more <laughs> about that. But it is very, very... Uh, we are very enthusiastic about that because uh, uh, it seems that uh, can provide to us some uh, beginnings uh, for this work. And uh, one of the main goal in the project, both in the Papieri and Ostwaka, is when we have a lot of peace, try to tell that we have in this part we have a group of peace that could match together. And after that, if you go inside this group, you can propose some assembly. Uh, 
in my mind, it's not possible to assert that if you take into account all, you can find directly the position and the organization of the different parts. So, the improvements that we have uh, to work on uh, uh, we have sometimes we don't have the right position or uh, we miss some fragments. Um, it is something that we have together with the papyrologue is that we can uh, we can adapt the parameter uh, of the network to tell um, more po false positive or more false negative. <coughs> it depends if you prefer to have a big data big class with some pieces that are wrong, but n not missing any. Uh, if you prefer to have a small group, a small set, but you are sure that all in the set are right. We can produce both. It is not our choice, it is your choice. It depends how you want to work. It depends on your data set. If you want, it depends on what you are looking for, of course. Uh, of course, we, we are always dependent of the quality of the image, and so in some regions, uh, if we don't have a lot of text, it is sure we never try to read the text. We have no parameter in the model to tell that it is demotic, that it is uh, some that there are some words in the in the piece of Ostraka papyri. Never. Uh, we just hope that the network can learn something about writing, so about some black piece of, uh, of, um, of pixel. So, so some pixels are black in some arrangement, no more. So it is important because we don't have any uh, uh, digital uh, dictionary. We, have, uh, we, we never refer to, to this kind of thing. Uh, <coughs> And of course, uh, the, the result is a pipeline of different methods, and we can readjust, we can uh, uh, we can modify this, this pipeline. But that's true that we most often pr propose a lot of uh, different organizations, and you have to uh, examine and to choose, and, and uh, the program can't do everything automatically for you. Uh, I told you that uh, the next step will be to add a lot of different information uh, in this kind of model for only one fragment, for example. And uh, we, we are working on papier fragments also. Uh, we have tested the papier fragment. We have analyzed the Michigan uh, database, and we have seen that we are not really uh, sensible to the language. So, uh, so we can separate quickly uh, uh, the different uh, papier uh, fragments, uh, depending on their language, we don't do a lot of mistakes, but the performance is the same if, we, if you want to, to uh, classify uh, with a lot of language, with only one, with demotic or with Greek, uh, it seems that we are not dependent of the language that, uh, that it is written. Yes. Important. Uh, we are working on, but it is uh, really the beginning of that. It is a <coughs> user-end interface, because if we produce something, uh, and we would like that you use it, and uh, to be able to use, you absolutely need an inter user interface. And what we have tested is that uh, it's not funny <laughs> to, to work uh, with more than 20 uh, fragments in a screen, even if you have a large screen, uh, it's small. Yeah, uh, and I'm not sure that we can find good solution with a screen for, for, for working all days with that. And so we are working with uh, augmented reality or virtual reality with a very, very small uh, uh, tools, just video and camera, no more, and uh, they project on a, on a table like that, no needs of big screen, no money for that, and it's very cheap, and uh, the, we put the image, and with your hand you can, uh, you can ask for some uh, information about the fragment, and you can move the fragment with your, uh, with your finger, 
Uh, we need to work more on. We have one prototype that has been made last year by a student, and, uh, and we, because it's difficult to, uh, to detect the end in the right way, because we have the problem of the speed of the movement. And uh, as the table is a current table, when you touch the table, the camera has to detect at each moment you just move like that, and when you touch that. Okay, but it is a computer science problem, not for you. But uh, in my mind, it is very important if we wanted to, to collaborate and if we want to do some uh, tools that you will, you will use or you could use. Uh, okay, so uh, Cecilia has published very, very, very recently. <laughs> it's just uh, it has been accepted in November and published now. Uh, if you have not seen pattern recognition letters, they have had a special issue on cultural heritage uh, this summer, the so last summer, and uh, Cecilia has been accepted. Uh, and of course, uh, the code is uh, is available on GitHub. Uh, in our area, we always uh, deliver everything freely because we collaborate, uh, we, we can benefit of the work of the other and of course we, we put our own work in the same way. 